This video is about the properties of trigonometric functions, and it corresponds to material found in section 6.3 of the textbook. Trig functions are functions of angle, represented here by theta. We want to find the domain of the six trig functions. When we consider the unit circle shown here in the figure, we see that the sine of theta is equal to y. There are no restrictions on what value theta can take on, so the domain of sine theta is equal to the set of real numbers. Looking at the unit circle again, we can see that cosine of theta is equal to x. Again, there are no restrictions on the value of theta, so the domain of cosine of theta is also equal to the set of real numbers. The tangent of theta is equal to y over x, but x cannot equal zero. This means that theta cannot have a terminal side that lies on the vertical axis where x equals zero. And that means that theta cannot equal pi over two, or three pi over two, or five pi over two, and so on. So we can write the domain as theta such that theta does not equal pi over two plus n pi, where n is an integer. n can be any integer, including negative ones. When we examine secant theta, we see that it has the same restrictions on it as tangent theta, namely that x cannot equal zero. This means theta cannot be pi over two, three pi over two, and so on. So the domain for secant of theta is the same as that of tangent theta. Now let's look at cosecant theta. Here we see that y cannot be zero, which means that the terminal side of theta cannot lie along the x-axis where y would be zero. This means that theta cannot equal zero degrees, or radians, or pi radians, or two pi radians, and so forth. So the domain of theta is theta such that theta does not equal n times pi, where n is any integer. When we look at cotangent of theta, we see that it has the same restriction on it as cosecant theta does, that is y cannot equal zero. So the domain of cotangent of theta is the same as that of cosecant theta. Now let's look at the ranges of the six trigonometric functions. We begin with p, a point on the unit circle at x comma y. We know that the values of both x and y fall between minus one and one. And since y is equal to sine theta on the unit circle, then sine theta must also fall between minus one and one. The true, same is true for cosine theta. Another way to express this is to say that the absolute value of sine theta must be less than or equal to one and that the absolute value of cosine theta must also be less than or equal to one. These basic restrictions lead to the discovery that cosecant theta is constrained to be either less than or equal to minus one or greater than or equal to one. And the same is true for secant theta. The ranges of tangent theta and cotangent theta are both the set of all real numbers. We now move on to the topic of periodicity. A periodic function is one that repeats itself at fixed intervals. We'd like to examine the periodicity of trigonometric functions. Let's look at position angle theta one, which equals pi over three. It's shown here along with the unit circle. We see that the point P on the unit circle that is on the terminal side 
of the position angle is P equals one half comma square root of three over two. The terminal side of angle theta two is the same, but this time the angle is pi over three plus two pi. And this is the same as 420 degrees, whereas theta one is the same as 60 degrees. The point on the terminal side of theta two at the unit circle is the same as that for theta one. This means that the sine of theta one is equal to the sine of theta two. In fact, in general, the sine of an angle plus an integer multiple of two pi equals the sine of that angle. The same is true for the cosine of an angle. Both sine theta and cosine theta are periodic signals. A periodic function is defined to be one that repeats every p units. P is the period of the function. For sine theta and cosine theta, the period of each of these is equal to two pi. Because cosecant theta and secant theta are the reciprocals of sine theta and cosine theta respectively, their periods are also two pi. The trigonometric functions tangent of theta and cotangent theta both have periods pi. Once we know the values of a trig function over a single period, we know all its values. We can use this to help us solve problems. For example, let's find the sine of 17 pi over four. We can express this as sine of pi over four plus 16 pi over four. And this simplifies to sine pi over four plus four pi. Since four pi is an integer multiple of two pi, we know that this function is equal to sine pi over four. And this equals the square root of two over two. Now we turn to trig identities, which are very useful in both algebra and calculus and other branches of mathematics. On the unit circle, the sine of theta is equal to y. And the cosine of theta is equal to x. And the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. We can substitute sine theta for y and cosine theta for x and we then obtain the identity tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. When we consider cotangent of theta, we see that this is the reciprocal of tangent of theta. So we know that cotangent of theta is equal to cosine theta over sine theta. We know that cosecant theta which equals one over y is also equal to one over sine theta because y is equal to sine theta on the unit circle. So we have this identity cosecant theta is equal to one over sine theta. Similarly, secant theta is defined to be one over x. We can substitute cosine theta for x. And this gives us the identity secant theta is equal to one over cosine theta because they are reciprocal functions. Now let's look at the unit circle again. We know that the point P's coordinates X comma Y correspond to cosine theta comma sine theta. The equation of the unit circle is X squared plus y squared is equal to one. Because P is on the unit circle, we can replace X with cosine theta and Y with sine theta. We can rewrite this equation as follows. We reverse the cosine theta squared and sine theta squared terms, and we use standard notation by writing sine theta squared as sine squared theta 
and cosine theta squared as cosine squared theta. If we divide each term of this equation by cosine squared theta, we obtain this equation, tangent squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta. If instead we divide each term by sine squared theta, we obtain this equation, one plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. T together, these three equations are known as the fundamental trigonometri trigonometric identities. Now let's look at position angles in the xy plane. The initial side always lies along the positive x-axis, but the terminal side can be anywhere in the plane. The quadrant in which the terminal side is located is one of the ways we identify an angle. For example, the position angle 120 degrees has its terminal side in the second quadrant, so it's usually called a second quadrant angle. The signs of the trigonometric functions of an angle depend on what quadrant its terminal side is located in. Consider the rectangular plane shown here. Its quadrants are marked in blue, and in each quadrant there is an ordered pair of symbols in red. These are the respective signs of the x and y coordinates. So for instance, in quadrant one, both the x and y coordinates are positive. Since x and y are both positive in this quadrant, this means that all the trigonometric functions of quadrant one angles are positive. In quadrant two, x values are negative and y values are positive. This means sine theta, which is equal to y, and cosecant theta, which is equal to one over y, will both be positive. Cosine theta, which is x, and secant theta, which is one over x, will be negative, as x is negative in this quadrant. Tangent theta is the ratio of y to x, as since y is positive and x is negative, tangent theta will be negative, as will cotangent theta, its reciprocal. In quadrant three, both x and y are negative. Tangent theta is equal to y over x, so it will be positive, as will cotangent theta. Sine theta is equal to y, which is negative, and so is cosecant theta, the reciprocal of sine theta. Cosine theta is equal to x, which is also negative, as is secant theta, its reciprocal. In quadrant four, x is positive, which means cosine theta is greater than zero, and secant theta, which is equal to one over cosine theta, is greater than zero. Two. Y is negative, so sine theta is negative, and so is its reciprocal, cosecant theta. Tangent theta, being the ratio of a negative number to a positive number, is also negative, as is its reciprocal, cotangent theta. We can use these properties of trig functions to help us solve problems involving them. For instance, let's say we know that the sine of an angle is one-third, and that the cosine of the same angle is negative. The general definition of sine theta is that it's y over r, where p is a point x, y on the circle of radius r. Since r is a radius, it will, by necessity, be positive. We can say here that r is equal to 3 and y is equal to 1. Since r is positive, y has to be positive, so theta is an angle in either quadrant one or quadrant two. But we also know that cosine theta is negative, which means that theta, by this constraint, is an angle in quadrant two or quadrant three. Based on these sets of constraints, theta must be in quadrant two, and so it's shown as such in the figure on the right. We'd like to find cosine theta, so let's look at the trig identity, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. 
we substitute in one third for sine theta, and then we can solve for cosine theta. We obtain two square root of two over three and minus two square root of two over three as possible answers for cosine theta. Since theta is in quadrant two, cosine theta must be negative two square root of two over three. Now let's look at an example in which tangent of theta is equal to one half. Since tangent of theta is equal to y over x, this means that either x and y are both positive, which would mean that theta is in quadrant one, or x and y are both negative, which would mean that theta is in quadrant three. We also know that sine theta is negative, and this means that theta is in quadrant three or quadrant four. Based on both of these constraints, those on tangent theta and those on sine theta, theta must be in quadrant three. Since theta is in quadrant three and tangent theta is equal to one half, we can say that theta corresponds to the point P equals minus two comma minus one. This point is on the circumference of a circle and we can find the radius of the circle by squaring negative two, the x coordinate, and adding it to the square of minus one, the y coordinate, and then taking the square root of the sum. When we do this, we get that r is equal to the square root of five. Now we know x, y, and r, and we can use them to find all of the trig functions of theta that we don't already know. Sine theta is equal to y over r, and that means it equals minus one over the square root of five. And when we rationalize this fraction, we get minus the square root of five over five. Cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine theta, so it equals minus the square root of five. Cosine theta is equal to x over r, so it equals minus two over the square root of five, which is rationalized to be minus two square roots of five over five. The secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine of theta, so it equals minus the square root of five over two. The cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of the tangent of theta, which we already know. The tangent of theta is one half, so that means that the cotangent of theta is two. The last property of trig functions we will consider is symmetry. We recall that function of theta is an even function when f of minus theta is equal to f of theta. And this means that the graph of the function is symmetric about the y-axis. Cosine theta is an even function, as is its reciprocal, secant theta. The function f theta is an odd function if f of minus theta is equal to minus f of theta. The graph of an odd function is symmetric with respect to the origin. Sine of theta is an odd function, as is its reciprocal, cosecant theta. Tangent theta and cotangent theta are also odd functions.